There's no way there's anything in here. How is there anything in here? No way. Oh, shit. I see it. I see it. I see it. I see it. Our journey continues in Vietnam's remote northwestern highlands. Right now, we're walking along this narrow path that wraps around the mountain. Over generations, folks here have learned to thrive while contending with harsh living conditions. Everything in this animal is going to be used in some way. Today, Andrew and I are going to learn the hard way. What is going on? What it really means to live off the land. Oh man, look at that thing. Andrew, yesterday we got to hang out with the black Hmong people and see how a wedding works. Today we get to go to the home of a black Hmong family. Awesome, but um, what about breakfast? Breakfast is the first thing we're gonna do, but we have to help make it. That's not that big of a deal. We got this, eggs, bacon, right? Uh, it's not that kind of a breakfast. No. Yeah, you'll see. We have come to the home of a black Hmong family. In this region, this is quite possibly where pounded rice was invented, though that is not substantiated. Pounded rice? So, you know, like mochi. Of course, they don't call it mochi here. They call it the local word, banzai. Today, we're gonna be making banzai with some local ladies. This is your team member. This is my team member. The goal is to pound your rice faster than the other team. Here are our tools. All we need now is the rice. Rice. Traditionally, banzai is a Vietnamese dish made from pounded white rice. Here, Hmong people have adjusted the banzai recipe, adding their own twist, using purple sticky rice that grows in this area. Wow, this is beautiful purple rice, naturally dyed. And we're about to naturally die in a second. This sticky rice is considered a luxury ingredient. It requires more care and produces significantly less yield than white rice. So only a small portion is grown and it's saved for honored guests and special events like weddings. Time to pound it. Go! What? Yeah, sorry. Come on, didn't you get that? There are 9 to 11 million Hmong people around the world. No mercy! This is one of the largest ethnic populations with no country of their own. Uh, quick, take advantage! Take a lead! We're taking the lead! Here, they're known for their ornate dress, made from hemp. Oh, you're, you're crushing us! Dyed in various colors, depending on which sub-tribe they belong to. Oh, no! I'm stuck! Here, the black Hmong wear a traditional black garb. These women are so badass! I know! How are they so powerful? Oi! We're finished! We're finished! Yes! Yes! No! Yes! Yes! It seemed like the pounding was the hardest part, but now we have this unwieldy, super oh. sticky glob of rice. This giant, magnificent glob will be portioned into smaller, more manageable globs. So she breaks off a piece, kind of rolling it in on itself like a big ball of mozzarella cheese. To prevent the pounded rice from sticking to their fingers, they coat their hands with hard-boiled egg yolks. She puts some egg yolk on this platter, and that's gonna stop it from sticking. <laughs> Boom, one complete. The sticky rice is ready to eat just like this but it can also be wrapped in a banana leaf and cooked by the fire. Ma'am, I was in such a hurry to pound that rice that I didn't get your name. What's your name? Me. 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 Miss Me is the head of this household. Like many other Hmong folks in her community, she and her family are farmers. Here, you've made a sticky rice dish. The name in locally is banzai. Now, is that the Vietnamese name? Yeah, it's or Vietnamese. The, oh, so it's Vietnamese name. So what do you call it? Bambla. 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 Ba is cake, uh. and blah is sticky. Before we can bite into the sticky rice cake, it must be cut with a piece of string. Usually, we use the hemp oh. string to cut it. The cake is paired with a traditional sauce, made from chilies roasted in ash. How do you say cheers? We say napa. 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 Mmm, that's awesome. 
It's like mung Tabasco. Mmm, that's great. I love this texture. You know, I went to Japan. I mean, their version of pounded rice. Mm -hmm. And the texture is quite a bit different. The world's most commonly known pounded rice is probably mochi, found in Japan. But it turns out, pounded rice wasn't invented in Japan or in Vietnam. It originated in ancient China and was introduced to Japan through Southeast Asia. What I had there was much more liquidy, super sticky. It definitely wouldn't get solid and crackly like this. Strong, you know, like you gotta put a bit of effort to separate this stuff. Mm -hmm. You've also prepared it in a grilled style over here. Can we try this? Oh, it's a big piece. It's kind of hot still. And there's just this beautiful big crackly crust on here. All right, let's see. Mmm, it has that toasted rice taste to it. Really delicious. I can't believe how different it is from the non-toasted version. If you've ever had like rice crispy cereal, that kind of toasted rice flavor, mm. that's really captured here. Right. This is a lovely breakfast. I really enjoyed it. I love this hot sauce. Um, what, uh, what's going on here? It's uh, jungle rats. Jungle rats. Jungle rats. Oh, they're jungle rats. And that is for, what is that for? For eating. Oh, for eating. If your family are very poor, you don't have enough cornfield, you don't have enough food to feed the chicken or pig, this is the only one you found without money. The Hmong are survivors, folks who were persecuted in China generations ago, so they moved. They packed up their lives and journeyed to lands most would consider untraversable and unlivable. But folks here adapted. They carved rice patties out of mountainsides and truly lived off the land. The men, when they got day off, they will go to the jungle and try to catch them. Living out here means being resilient and resourceful. Time to see if Andrew and I have what it takes. Andrew, I didn't tell you yet, but today we're actually going to be helping them procure some different food items for the meal we're going to be having tonight. What can Andrew do? What about catch the air on the rice field? He seems like he's a good fisherman, like, All right. but. What's going on here? I know, just last time you didn't catch any fish? Guys, I'm pretty disappointed. Nothing, absolutely nothing. All right, Moo, we're catching an eel, okay? Yeah. A rice field eel. Yes. 100%. Yes. Promise me. Yes. Okay guys, we've now come down from the house up there to the rice fields of Tule. I'm with my partner Ha. Together we have smashed Sunny's team once and we're gonna smash him again. Unfortunately, I don't see any fishing rods or anything. I just have this traffic cone looking instrument. Speculate a little bit. Like this? <laughs> no! No? <laughs> no! Maybe. While Andrew is off fishing, the men and I are heading to the mountainside to hunt down a mysterious jungle creature. Hopefully, we'll have something to bring back for dinner. And right now, she's digging a hole through the side of this dam wall. I think what's gonna happen is we're literally just gonna drain this whole rice field, and plug our minnow traps into the hole so that any eels that are in here have two options. They either arrive in our minnow traps and get eaten, or they get stranded in the now dry rice field. If there are any eels in this rice field, I don't see how they get away with this. They've gotta be caught, right? Right now, we're walking along this narrow path that wraps around the mountain, and under any of this foliage could be a hole that a rat or some kind of rodent is hiding in. We've gone just a short ways from Miss Mee's home to this mountainside forest. I'm trying to think, if I was a rat, what kind of a hole would I build? Left alone here, I'd probably starve to death. I'd probably put it under here. I'd probably put a little roof on top. I'd probably have a little porch in front, but that would be a little too obvious. But for locals, there's food all around us, including a not so common protein source. Hmm? Oh, I think he found something over there. We've drained a good portion of this rice field already and we still don't have any eels. How can there be eels in here? It's a rice paddy. Where could they come from? It's probably been dry for years and considering our MT trap, I really am starting to question this. So we've come across a hole here. There's no way to know for sure if there's anything inside. The only way to know is to kind of knock on the door. Uh, he's gonna do that now using a garden hole. Sir, take it away. Leading the hunt today, Mr. Zhang. Is he? No, he's sticking his hand in there. That's like the scariest thing. He's looking, oh God. Oh, uh, no, empty? Uh, there's nothing there. No. Okay, just because you find a tunnel doesn't mean there's gonna be anything there. So we just have to keep trying and hope that there's something in the next one. So as the water is almost draining out, you can see the eels, the ripples of the dorsal fin cutting across the top of the water. So it turns out you drain all the water, it's pretty easy to find the fish. Oh, oh come on. Look, we've already caught one. I can see, I can see something in there. This is a great start. Uh. 
We have just tumbled upon a hole. You can't even really see it. It's completely covered. If there's something in there, it has kind of closed the door on itself. Sir, take it away. Look, I see an eel. That's, oh! Oh, oh man, look at that thing. Locally, these are called eels, but they're actually loaches, a species of elongated freshwater fish. It's got like whiskers, kind of like a catfish. It's slippery as fuck, keeps moving. and kind of like walk along my hands, which is strange for a fish. Whoa, how does he see it? What does he see? Really? It looks like it's all caved in. No way. There's no way there's anything in here. It's still, oh, oh shit, I see it, I see it, I see it, I see it. Oh my God, this is the most dangerous part. This thing has huge teeth. He's grabbing it behind the neck. Oh no, it's freaking huge. What? No way. I can't believe he just did this. I thought there was no chance of there being anything in there, but he just really expertly pulled him out of that hole. I mean, look at these teeth. One bite from this rat and it's gonna rip a quarter of your finger off. From here, I think we're gonna head back to the house and uh, well, you guys know what comes next. Andrew, we've just come back from our hunt, my friend. Yes. The results? Oh, look at that sunny side. That's a lot. Can I tell you? I also got something. Can you hear it? It sounds like a wolverine. Andrew, feast your eyes on this. What the hell, man? It is pissed. This isn't just any mega-sized rat species. It's called a bamboo rat, a rodent found throughout Southeast Asia that feeds on bamboo. You caught this? I basically caught this. What do you mean you basically caught this? I went out there with the local guy. All right, walk me through this. What yeah. exactly did you contribute to this? God, what did I contribute? I shed a, a healthy amount of doubt on the situation. There's no way there's anything in here. I described the situation as what was happening in detail. Oh, it's sticking his head out right now. Is he gonna come at us? So basically nothing. I didn't really do anything. No. Damn it. <laughs> For now, we're bringing this ang- We're bringing this angry little guy to dinner. After dispatching the animal, the men collect the bamboo rat's blood. Then, Miss Me drips this freshly collected fluid into her daughter's eyes. She believes that since rats live in dark places, they must have great vision. She hopes this great vision can be passed on through the animal's blood. It's impossible to know if this is a tradition among people in this region people on this side of the mountain, or just people in this household. But it doesn't seem to be a widespread practice. Adults, mainly adult men, also seek to get their own benefits from this freshly spilled rat's blood. Andrew, Funny side. a big part of belonging to the hunting party is what we're about to do next. These guys mix the blood with a potent rice wine and drink a shot in an effort to increase stamina oh. and virility. Ah. Oh, it's satisfying, huh? It's hard to describe what I like the least in that shot. The corn wine is really intense and abrasive. It's not refined at all. But when you add blood to it, then it tastes like iron. All right, that was a uh, aperitif. And now we're ready to get dinner started. Cooking is underway. Everyone pitches in. The ladies take care of the fire and rice, while the men prepare the meat. When the meat is ready, it hits the fire. We are back here with the loaches that we've just caught out of the rice field, and we're following along with the story. Right now, they've been sandwiched in these bamboo skewers. I imagine this is a pretty traditional way to cook fish. The meat here looks really different, actually. It looks more like a beef. I wonder if it's got like a little bit more of a protein-like flavor than the white flaky ocean fish we're kind of used to. I've definitely never eaten a fish out of a rice field before, and I'm pretty excited to. There's also a bunch of rats coming up as well, and they're cooking in a very similar manner. Giant rat skewers. But not everything is roasted. One dish will be stewed with a very special ingredient. Right now we're making a dish out of that bamboo rat. He's gonna take the intestine and remove the contents of what's inside. Will that be thrown away? Absolutely not. Everything in this animal is gonna be used in some way. Yesterday, Andrew and I went to a wedding where we saw them cook kind of an gastric acid soup out of the beef intestine. Here, he's doing a similar preparation, but with rat intestines. I can see there's kind of a pattern of really, one, using every single part of the animal, but two, appreciating these really deeply bitter acidic flavors. Let's try it out. 
Thomas. Thank you so much for having us here. It's a, an honor to be joining you for dinner right now. Let's take a quick tour around the table. We've got Jungle Rat. Here we have the eel gastric acid soup. And then this looks like a yummy dessert we have in the US. What is that actually? This is their snake. A uh, snake? Yes. For these snake cakes, snake meat is minced, shaped, and fried until it turns a desirable shade of golden brown. When's the last time you had a snake? She had never either how her life. Oh, she, really? <laughs> when is the last time you had snake? He very scared snake. Has anyone eaten snake here? He eat a lot. Oh, <laughs> all right, the hunter. All right. So when is the last time? Like uh, one years ago. This is what's interesting about a video like this, is everyone will look at everything here and assume this is what they eat all the time. Every day. Not true. Two people here never have even had the snake ever. One guy eats it often, yep. the last time a year ago. So stop your assumptions, internet. All right, should we try it out? She is here. I'll tell you, they just put some herbs in there, some seasoning, it's nice and fried. It is nearly impossible to eat. It is just so full of tiny hard bones, but the taste is good. Mm. Of everything here, what's your favorite? We like the jungle rat. Oh, the jungle rat? That's all I need, Andrew. Yeah. So let's try it out, grab one. Do we eat the bones on this guy too? Yeah. Shut the fuck up, is she serious? Is she fucking with us? Oh, she's no. ripping the head off right now. She's putting it in her mouth. Oh my lord. It's very crunchy, mm. very good. All right, people at home, they know now. No, 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 no. We gotta eat it. We're about being open-minded. I'm open-minded, she tried it. We don't need to all try it. What is wrong with you? That's the point Eat of this it. show. Ah, uh, yeah, fine, okay, good, yes. So we twist the head off until the neck Swallow. gives out. We'll try it out. I gotta say, that's not bad. Wonderful smoky flavor coming from the way they cook it. I can't believe how juicy it is on the inside. It's really quite tender and soft. I think I got a brain in there. Mm. It tastes brainy. Yeah. Brain in it. Rats are smart, you know that? Oh. This one tastes really smart. Andrew, I think we should try the fish that you so bravely caught. Yeah, that's a great idea. Grilled rice field loaches. Start with garlic, chilies, and lemongrass, all finely chopped. Then pepper, salt, and MSG. Not very fishy at all. No, that's good. It's juicy, it's yummy. The seasoning he put on there is coming through. And the bones are, are so thin that it's kind of a nice texture. I don't mind the bones. Andrew, well done. Well, thank you, sir. Yes, and you know, the woman that actually did all the work. But well done. We have one final dish that we built up to. It's kind of a bamboo rat gastric acid soup made of the digestive fluid in the rat's intestines. Bamboo rat gastric acid soup. After the bamboo rat's intestines are extracted and washed, they get chopped up, releasing their contents, including the gastric acid. Think of it like a deeply bitter stomach acid. Yummy, huh? Mix that with chopped ginger and chilies and add it to a pot. Wait until it cooks through. Add water and chopped lime leaves. Cheers. Oh, that's interesting. They have put so many herbs in there. Got like a little bit of that livery taste, but other than that, it's really that leaf that shines through. Yeah, there's a little bit of the bile-iness, mm. but it's behind all these other spices. They've mixed it with so many other intense flavors that the bile's having a hard time shining through. Yeah. This one was scary to me. When you're looking at the rat, when you're looking at the preparation and mm. the intestine, it's like, oh my gosh, what have I gotten into? What are we doing? Right. But I can see they don't look at it as being a lot different from any other creature, and they definitely use everything. I gotta say, it's very amazing for me to see how resourceful everyone is here and how much you're able to do with what you have. And it seems like the way you live is very sustainable, growing your own food, raising your own animals. What kind of stuff do you still have to buy with money? More than she needs to buy is salt or oil. If she has a bit more money, she might buy meat. That's it? Yes. I'm curious, if you had unlimited resources, what is one thing you might want to buy? She would love to buy a machine to plow the rice field. If you have the machine, you don't lose whole years to take after the water buffalo just to plow the rice field. People here are the definition of resourceful. This is the only one you found without money. They're not waiting to be saved. No way! They're not waiting to be taken care of by a charity or government organization. These women are so badass! I know! They wake up each morning counting on the only people they can count on, themselves 
and each other. And the other, she would like to open a store to sell things to local people. Miss Mee's dream is to one day own a simple convenience store on a main road. So finally, she can relieve herself of work in the fields and let the customers come to her. I hope one day she gets there. Goodbye, love. Goodbye, sin. I don't need that voice within anymore. We've seen that living off the land is not for the weak. But next time, learning to live off the water becomes a bit of a problem. What we need to do is use your mouth to cook it. Dude, what is going on? Being an influencer doesn't require millions of fans. All you need is this t-shirt. Entertain and inspire at your own pace. Don't be an influencer. Be a micro-influencer. Get your shirt now. Are they doing a thumbnail? Are they doing a thumbnail without me? What are they doing, Kai? Are they posing? <laughs> <laughs> you know, these, these ladies are smart. They were doing like a thumbnail. We are literally just going to drain this whole rice field. Any eel that is in this lake, they have two options. They get caught by us or they, they drown. No, they, they don't drown out of whatever. You know, you get the drift. The intestines are separated into two different parts right now. These here are the large intestines. That is filled with poopy. We don't want to eat that. That's nasty. Guys, we did it. Another episode in the canister. I hope you had a great time. I sure did. Guys, I really want to thank Andrew for joining me too. Andrew's my good buddy living here in Vietnam who also has his own platform, social media here on YouTube. You can follow him and see what he's up to as well. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. Peace.